In Christ we are blessed. To live in the praise of his glorious grace. To live in the praise of his glorious grace. To live in the praise of his glorious grace. To live in the praise of his glorious grace. Our hymn is 585, the string of light and light. And which, which version are we singing? Okay. different too. Don't know that to me. He's asking me. <laughs> so I think he's got head, do you have headphones in. It, it's kind of in and out. So, um, okay, so we're, we're continuing to make improvements. We had, uh, I want to thank uh, Lindsay's Uncle Bill uh, that was here yesterday and Roger, they were working on the system and we're going to continue to make improvements on that. And your uncle did say that if it wasn't right, your grandpa would be to hear from it from your grandpa. So, so Alan would let him know on that. <laughs> But uh, we're going to continue to make this better. Uh, so I want to thank you all for your patience. And, uh, um, and so we're, we're, we're making strides on that. So um, announcements, uh, we want to continue to uh, we'll have, as we've done with our live and personal worship service, uh, during the silent prayers, we will have the prayers up on the, on the screen. But I'm going to turn it over to you. Do you have any joys or concerns, uh, prayers, announcements to be lifted up here this morning? Yes. Pastor, there are concerns about no bulletins for those of us that attend. Would it be possible to maybe print it again, lay it out for people to pick it up on their own and either discard it on the way out or take it home with them? You know, that, that was a decision that was brought up at the church council meeting. And at the church council meeting, it was voted unanimously not to have bulletins. And so I would recommend that when we have our meeting in February, that that be brought up again. Other other discussion. Okay. 
Um, birthdays or anniversaries. New birthday celebrations going on. So, uh, I think uh, we want to continue as we continue to move forward. Oh, here we got a sound is good, but, but here conversation, oh, okay. <laughs> um, and so, uh, these are the comments on Facebook, uh, as, and these are really, really helpful. So to, to, I want to thank those that uh, are continuing to make comments. Let us know how we can continue to make things better. And we then we have up here, oh, oh, this is okay. The Bible tells us all about Jesus' story. And then it starts right over here, where we get to hear someone read the scripture passage, the Bible that we talked about. And then we have someone over here that leads us in the music. Okay. Oh, we talked about this, the communion. Can you think of any other place that we learn about Jesus? Yes. Oh, and you can learn about the Bibles out there. That's right. That's right. Um, let's see here. I have not. I know. I know. Ted, would you put your hands together like in prayer? When you pray like that. Uh, can you think of another one? Anybody else? Where else can we see Jesus? Uh, on the cross. That's right. Oh, man. I've got to go all the way up here. It's so hard to run in this boot. Oh, there we go. Yep. On the cross. Oh, and while we're up here, the light. Yes. What's that? You don't, yeah, I don't want to touch the, the star because it'll become a flaming star. That's right. Yes. What, what else? What else? Can you want, think of anyone else? Oh, and uh, the, are you pointing at the, the windows? Yeah. Oh, the windows. Yes. So when we look at the windows, we get to see the story. Yes. What else? Story. And the stories. Story. And the stories that we tell about Jesus. That's right. So that's all the places that the flat, that the star takes us. Yes. Yes. Well, it's a great one. Yeah. So I want you to remember that. Because today we is all about the star. But more importantly, it's about the light of Jesus. And all the places that we are you ready to pray? Okay. All right. Let's put our hands together. Say, Dear God, we thank you for your light and your star that shows us Jesus. Amen. Oh, and do you think the candy, can we find Jesus in the candy? No. No. Okay. <laughs> well, I think so because that's a gift. So you know what I'll do? Because we'll have the star shining right over the candy. And over the person giving you the candy. <laughs> well, what? Okay, you can put, yes, thank you. <laughs> uh, was told that the person that we had arranged for special music could not make it here today. And so Lindsay would like you to request a song for us to sing. Is there a song that you would like to sing? Yes. This little line of mine in a regular way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you don't. She doesn't have the music, no. but can you lead us in that? This little line oh. of mine, I will let it shine. This little line of mine, I do. Oh, oh. She, she, she's got the music. She's got the music. I got it. Okay.
come to our prayer time, and uh, we invite you to uh, uh, direct your attention to the prayer that's on the screen, and uh, let's pray. Friends, as we gather our thoughts into quietness, we confess our sins to the one who knows us best. We know ourselves chosen, adopted as children of God. We dare to believe that you and I are part of the plan conceived before the foundation of the universe. But are we living as God's children? Are we honoring our inheritance? We know ourselves called, but we're so easily distracted. We know ourselves loved, but we walk at the cost. Come, friends, let us confess our sins to the Lord. continue to pray. Friends, our God has poured out grace on grace freely in great abundance. Even on you, even on me, though we never earned it and don't deserve it. In Christ we are made new through his blood. All your sins and mine crumble away. In Christ we are forgiven, signed with the Spirit, lavished with gift upon you. Release into hope to live for praise and for glory. Amen. Let us now let us continue to pray. Second. Dear Lord, we, uh, we, we want to add to this list the death of Dolores Benjamin, who passed away this past week. Uh, we know that her service will be later. Uh, we lift up uh, those that are celebrating birthdays. Uh, Steve Thomas had a birthday yesterday, and, and we, uh, uh, we congratulate him and, and rejoice with him. Uh, we lift up those that are uh, at home watching, watching this service, and uh, 
and being patient with us as, as, uh, as we attempt to, to try something new and, and we certainly appreciate the feedback that, that comes as, as, we, uh, as we try to, to figure out this, uh, this life, this, this storm, this, this, uh, this new beginning that's before us. Uh, gracious God, it's not like what it used to be. It's frustrating. Here. It, uh, uh, it is uh, maybe things are, are left out of our hands, and, uh, and there's just a sense of, of powerlessness as, as, we, uh, as we continue to walk forward. And I just ask that, that, uh, that we find the grace that lies in the light that continues to shine. Wonderful God. This is a tough time. Not only for uh, those that we lift up on our list here this morning, but each and every one of us. Uh, yes, we've turned a new page and, and the calendar is new in, in 2021, but, but somehow it seems like we're still stuck in, in ways we were just a few days ago. Dear Lord, remind us of your hope. Remind us of your peace. We continue to, to trust in, in, in the people that, that you've entrusted it to. Let us pray together these prayers and many more as we pray our first prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, and as we forgive those who trespass against us. Let us sing hymn number four, 596, Blessed Jesus, at the verse 1, just the verse 1. And uh, by the time it arrived, 
Well, we'd already moved on, things like that. So anyway, this is our, our new toy that, that we ordered uh, specifically for that. Um, but uh, we're going to make it work here this morning uh, as a, kind of a platform for me to, uh, uh, to preach and to share the message with you. Um, as we start out, I want all of you to, uh, to shout out that phrase with me. Would you just say that? We made it! Oh, come on, come on, we made it! Come on, let's try that one more time. We made it! There we go, now the people at home can hear you. We made it to 2021! We made it past 2020! We made it! It, it kind of reminds me of a meme that's floating around the internet right now uh, that says, hindsight is now 2020. <laughs> oh yeah, I know, there you go, bad joke, bad joke, it, most memes are. Now, we, now that we made it to 2021, I'll tell you, there's a lot of pressure. Uh, this week, NPR was interviewing people in the midst of grief. Powerful series. And something that we will address when this pandemic is all over. And the other day, the reporter asked this one guy, or excuse me, in the, in the interview, said this. Very interesting. There is a lot of pressure on 2021. Think about that. There's a lot of pressure for things to be better. A lot of pressure for things to be different. A lot of pressure to restore everything that 2020 was not. And in the interview, she asked the man, uh, at least on Monday, um, what his view was like for the year 2021. And he said this. He was cautiously optimistic. You know, I, I thought about that statement, that phrase, as we turn the and I, I thought about that phrase as, as, I, as I was turning the calendar for 2021. We are cautiously optimistic as that dial goes from red to orange. We are cautiously optimistic uh, as the vaccine rolls out. We are cautiously optimistic as we uh, leave Christmas in the rear view mirror. We are cautiously optimistic as we start making plans on the calendar. We're consciously optimistic as we state our New Year's resolutions. We're consciously optimistic as we say we made it. And now I say this because we aren't quite sure that we've arrived yet. We're not quite so positive that the danger is over. One of the things that we learned about last year is that it can go bad in our hurry. Consciously optimistic. Reminds me of my favorite movie, Morning Has Broken. Now, I love this song. I mean, we're going to actually march through this hymn throughout this sermon series. And in fact, we're going to be lifting up the title for each of the sermons is a, a mention of a verse of one of the hymns of the song. And so what we're going to do is we're going to sing the verse that is, corresponds with the title. And this morning it is, Mine is the Sunlight. And so I'm going to invite you to sing verse 3 of Morning Has Broken. Let us sing. Will be with you. Nations will be drawn to your light. 
and kings to the dawning of your new day. Look around you and see what is happening. Your people are gathering to come home. Your sons will come from far away. Your daughters will be carried like children. You will see this and be filled with joy. You will tremble with excitement. The wealth of the nations will be brought to you from across the sea to their riches. From across the sea, their riches will come. Great caravans of camel, camels will come from Midian and Ephah. They will come from Sheba bringing gold and incense. People will tell the good news of what the Lord has done. May God add his blessing to the reading of his word. I want to share something with you that I came across in the research on this message. Uh, I keep a file for each Sunday of the year, and it's full of illustrations and stories, bulletins, ideas that I come across with. And some of them are timely, and some I've kept for years. And uh, the passage that I want to share with you comes from a periodical that I subscribed to back in the year 2003, based on the interpretation of this passage. And the date on this was January 5th, 2003. Very interesting. We now live in a society in which the degree of perceived threat to life and limb is rated daily on a color-coded chart. The lowest rating means we shouldn't lose any sleep, while the highest rating alerts us to imminent danger from something, somewhere, sometime soon. Words such as smallpox and suitcase nukes enter our consciousness through the calm, business-like tones of news announcers. Isaiah's listeners were likewise living in a cultural climate of fear and uncertainty, where threat of danger was a constant reality. In the midst of this pervasive, free-flowing anxiety, the prophet proclaims the word of the Lord, Arise, shine, for your light has come. At first glance, God doesn't seem to ask a lot of us here, only that we acknowledge God's light within us and allow that light to gather in those around us who are searching for signs for hope. No sweat, right? Actually, claiming our own God-given power to confront the darkness in our world can and often does present a great challenge. Epiphany is an ideal time to remember that the source of that light within us is love itself, God with us, the light of the world. Do you remember a few weeks ago I mentioned to you that this stuff is a confession? Christmas is a belief. Christmas, the belief in, excuse me, Christmas, the belief in Christmas is a confession. The belief that Christmas has changed and will change the world is a statement of faith. It is a confession of faith. And today marks the end in the church calendar of Christmas. We turn to Epiphany. It's the moment that the church marks as a confession. A confession of what 2021 means. Mourning has broken. It's a confession of, of hope on the horizon. Of, that we can start to plan things again. That, that we can envision what life is going to be like again. Is a confession to be cautiously optimistic. Because mine is the sunlight. It's a belief in a new beginning. It's a confession that morning has indeed broken. And with it, we can behold the sunlight again. And in that confession is hope. And optimism, a new beginning. Sunlight, which is God's light, can be found within. And that is a confession. An acknowledgement of something different, that, and that's something that gets our attention. So, um, what does minus the sunlight mean? Well, I want us to focus on a word right now. Now, we've done this before. If you remember last year, we focused on two words, which was incessantly waiting. And we did that during our quarantine time as we marched along with the, the Hebrew people and their trek through the wilderness. But today, as we begin 
the dawn of a new year, the, the dawn that morning has indeed broken, I want us to focus on mine is the sunlight and what that means. Potential. I am hoping that 2021 is defined by our potential. Before we get to that word, let's look at the definition of what potential is. Potential, having or showing the capacity to become or develop into something in the future. Listen to this story. Tony Buzan, in his book, The Power of Verbal Intelligence, gives us a wonderful example of the story of the origins of the Suzuki method that was helped millions of children learn to play the violin. It begins with a Japanese teacher, musician, and instrument maker named, of course, Suzuki. Suzuki had two moments in his life when he gained life-changing insights. Suzuki's first revelation came when he was visiting a building that served as a giant incubator for thousands of Japanese songbirds known as larks. The breeders of these larks take literally thousands of eggs and incubate them in giant, warm, silent halls that act as a gigantic nest. There's only one sound that the tiny songbirds hear as they break through the shell of their eggs. It's the sound of another lark, a very special adult lark that is chosen because of its singing ability. Now Suzuki noticed to his amazement that every little chick that hatched automatically began to copy the master singer lark. Even more remarkable, after a few days, he observed that each chick, having started out by purely copying the song, began to develop its own variations on the original master song. The breeder waits until the chick musicians have developed their own styles and then selects from them the next master singer. And so the process continues. Astounding, thought Suzuki. If a bird's tiny, tiny brain can learn so perfectly, then surely the human brain, with its vastly superior abilities, should be able to do the same and better. This line of reasoning led Suzuki to his next revelation that every Japanese child learns to speak Japanese. When Suzuki pointed this out to his friends, they laughed and assured him that they already knew that. But no, no, declared Suzuki, they really do, and it's amazing. Suzuki was correct, says Tony Buzan. Like Newton before him, he had discovered something that was so obvious that no one could see it, that any baby born in, in any country automatically learns within two years the language of that country. This means that every normal baby's brain is capable of learning millions of potential languages. Now think about that for a few moments, and you will realize what an amazing thing that is. Given the proper environment, the human creature is capable of acquiring an amazing amount of information and skills in a short amount of time. It is truly sad that so much of this potential is neglected. By the way, a parent should not give up on a child who seems lacking in potential. Albert Einstein couldn't speak fluently even when he was nine years old. His parents actually thought that he was mentally challenged. Children develop differently and children are gifted in different ways. You and I come into this world having enormous mental and physical potential, much of which is never realized. I love that story. It gives me something to look forward to as we march, as I march, cautiously, optimistically, into 2021. Now, as we look forward, I, I want to look at our text again, specifically a, a few verses. Uh, first one, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Now, this verse actually refers to something that has already happened. But notice where the text goes next. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples, but the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. It's a shift to the future. Potential is all about the shift to the future. Morning has broken is about the shift to the future. It is a confession of what is to come. It is a confession of the potential that lies within. It is the confession that lies in that phrase, mine is the sunlight. Because listen to what happens in the next line. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. 
Now that is potential. I, I love the message from the bishop last week. He told this story about the man that was in that cave for 48 hours in utter darkness. And he said that when he came out, nothing in his surroundings changed, but everything that he saw changed. The grass was greener, colors were more vibrant, and the potential of life was so evident. You know, there are a lot of things that we would like to leave behind us. Can I get an amen to that? A lot of things that we want to bury from the year 2020 in that dark cave. Well, I think we can amen to that as well. 2020 was not a kind year to us. But that's not our focus right now. Mine is the sunlight. is about capturing that potential. It's about a confession. Morning that has broken is about hope. It's about our relationship with God. It is about what God has in store as we march cautiously, optimistically into the new year. It is the good news. Nations shall come to your light and kings to the brightness of your dawn. It's a confession of that faith that God resides in me, that God is now in you, that the change that you seek for this new year, the hope that you're searching for, is right here in your potential. I want to end today with a, with a great story from Robert Fuller, who wrote that wonderful book, All I Really Need to Learn, and I learned in kindergarten. He writes, And speaking of gifts, I should tell you, it is not my rule necessarily. It came from a grumpy-looking man at a holiday office party, a man coming down with a full-blown case of Scrooge-itis. He had just unwrapped his dinky little present from under the office tree. In tones of amused sorrow, he said to nobody in particular, You know, it's not true that what counts is the thought and not the gift. It just isn't true. My mother was pulling my leg on that one. I have collected so much gift-wrapped trash over the years from people who copped out and hurriedly bought a little plastic cheapy to give under the protective flag of good thoughts. I tell you, it is the gift that counts. Or rather, people who think good thoughts give good gifts. It ought to be a rule, the brass rule of gift exchange. And he stomped off toward a garbage can carrying his little gift as if it was a dead roach. Well, maybe so. It's a kind of harsh judgment and a little close for comfort. But the spirit of the season has been clear for a long time. God, who, it is said, started all this, cared enough to send the very best. On more than one occasion, and the wise men did not come bearing tacky knickknacks. Even old Santa, when he was making his list, is checking it twice. And the angels came bringing good news, which was not about a half price sale. I do know what I want someone to give me for Christmas. I've known since I was 40 years old. Wind-up mechanical toys that make noises and go round and round and do funny things. No batteries. Toys that need me to help them out from time to time. The old-fashioned painted tin ones I had as a child. That's what I want. Nobody believes me, but that's what I want, I tell you. Well, okay, that's close, but not quite exactly it. It's delight and simplicity. That is what I want. Foolishness and fantasy and noise, angels and miracles and wonder and innocence and magic, that's closer to what I want. It's harder to talk about. But what I really, really, really want for Christmas is just this. I want to be five years old again for an hour. I want to laugh a lot and cry a lot. I want to be picked up and rocked to sleep in someone's arms and carried up to bed just one more time. I know what I really want for Christmas. I want my childhood back. Nobody is going to give me that. I might give at least the memory of it to myself if I try. I know it doesn't make sense, but since when is Christmas about sense anyway? It is about a child of long ago and far away, and it is about the child of now. In you and me. Waiting behind the door of our hearts for something wonderful to happen. A child who is impractical, unrealistic, simple-minded, and terribly vulnerable to joy. A child who does not need or want or understand the gifts of socks or pocket pullers. The brass rule is true. The word 
words of Robert Coleman, the brass rule of gift exchange is in you. It's in me. It's in us. Mine is the sunlight is about potential this year. Morning has broken. It's right here and right now. Even though our pandemic is not over. But this child allows us to dream of something bigger, something brighter, something better, and really, really, really something more hopeful this year. And I can stand here and say, yes, that is a confession. We come to our offertory, and uh, we continue to not pass out the offering plates. It's a decision of the church council. Uh, but we have a locked box back there and uh, that can be used as our offering plates. Uh, we can also use the post office, send your gifts into the church at 900 O Street. And uh, we also have our online giving portal, uh, which is, uh, can be found on the Give Now button at our website. And uh, for any of you that are watching at home, that is available. It's very, very easy to use. But let us just pause now as we listen to our offertory, as we listen to Lindsay play. <laughs> Dear Lord, we uh, pray. We pray for thankfulness that we got through 2020 and, and now start a new year full of so much hopefulness. We pray for the ability of those that have volunteered their service here this morning. We pray for those that are here in worship. We pray for those that were able to log in. We pray for patience. I pray that uh, you continue to, to find ways to uh, make us better, make us brighter, make us more hopeful. For this, we give you thanks. There is so much turbulence in the world right now, even in our own backyards, and, and it's tough. We're, we're carrying a lot of baggage, a lot that, that we hold and, and that we're frustrated with. But I, I just ask that you just give us a deep breath. Allow us to count our blessings. Allow this new year to be something so much more bright, hopeful, and helpful. In the name of the prayer. Amen. 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 Amen
Please rise as we sing our God song. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him, all the heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Turn to page 17 for our communion ritual. Um, but first, just a couple of quick announcements. So this Wednesday, uh, we continue. We will have the service here in the sanctuary for Mariah, and it will be live streamed. And we'll continue to make improvements on that. Uh, we're continuing to get good feedback. Did you get the one from Chris? Uh, I, Chris sent a, a text. To, uh, we're getting some really, really good feedback. But along those lines, we are looking for volunteers to help with this system. Uh, this is something that, that we're going to continue to make improvements with. And, and one of the things that uh, Bill Bauer said is that he would love to give us a tutorial on how to run the soundboard. And so this is going to be something that, that we're going to have multiple folks that are getting used to. And let me tell you just a, a quick story about my conversation with the gentleman in Scott's Bluff. So, as many of you know, Roger was on COVID quarantine for about two weeks, which meant that sometimes you cannot always rely on one person to be, such, for example, the engineer with our live stream service. And this virus, this quarantine, has reminded us that sometimes you cannot always rely on just one person. We need to have multiple people trained in places that volunteer for the church. And the gentleman I was visiting with that runs the live stream over in Scotts Bluff said that Craig is so worried that he's going to get COVID and then that's it. There's nobody else. Uh, so if you are interested in this, let me know. Uh, we're looking for multiple volunteers to, to run the camera, to, to engineer the system, to run the sound booth. And, and um, I can tell you, I was absolutely fascinated by the, the knowledge that Bill had about the sound board and just all the things that we can learn on it. And so, Please let me know, and uh, we'll let you know when we get those trainings done. So, I uh, wanted to get those announcements out. All right, so, um, let's go to our ritual here. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. You may all be seated. So, those that are worship worshiping with us at home, we invite you to grab your bread, grab your juice, and to participate in the communion ritual together, just as you've done all the countless times on Zoom. It is right and good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. Before the mountains were brought forth, or you formed the earth from everlasting to everlasting, you alone are God. You created light out of darkness and brought forth life on the earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to, you, to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join in our identity. Holy, holy, holy. Likewise, he took the cup, shared it with those at the table that night, 
and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and feast as heaven may be. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God. in communion using the bread and the chalice and this will be for the benefit of those watching at home so that they can share with me uh, just as we often do with the Zoom service. I invite you, those that are here in the sanctuary, to come and participate in the bread. Uh, we have cups, and ju uh, cups of juice and cups of bread uh, social distance apart, located apart, um, and allow you to come and, and participate in your own way. And then also uh, trash cans on the end, these are just plastic cups that can be used for disposable. Um, so we invite you to come forward and participate in communion that way. Uh, remind you that John Wesley, the founder of Methodism, considered communion an opportunity for us to do at any moment. At any moment. And I'm reminded of a conversation I had with my wife yesterday. Some of you probably saw the article in the newsletter about my trip to Lidditz, Pennsylvania, which I was so excited, and I did. I did want to shout, thank you, but I thought that would have been kind of weird uh, to be, do so. But those Moravian brethren were so influential in, G in John Wesley's life. And one of them was in the area of community that this is a, an act of love of God. And uh, as I said in that, in that newsletter article, I don't even think they even know who John Wesley was. But for us as Methodists, the influence of the Moravian Brethren is huge. And one of it is communion. Is that we have this love known from God that comes to us and through us. So I invite you to come forward, not as a member of this church, not a member of the Moravian Brethren Church, not a member of any church, but to simply experience the love of God. So, as I said, uh, we invite you to come forward now to kneel, and as the folks are, are doing so here in the sanctuary, I will share communion with those.
in your hymnal at page 607 is the Wesleyan Covenant Prayer. And one of the things that I have learned from our African brothers and sisters, especially from Godson, is how important this prayer is. Uh, I remember one of my first conversations I had with Godson, and, and we were talking about the new year, and he asked the question, he goes, so what are you going to do? And I said, well, some people like fireworks, and you know, we might stay up until midnight, and, you, know, you know, different things. And he says, oh, I meant, because we have a big surf, we have a big worship service. And the Methodist Church in Ghana, this is, this is almost as, as important. In fact, it's even more important than Christmas. So he said that Christmas Eve is, is kind of a, an important service, but, but it is all about getting to that New Year's Day service. And, and so it was, it, I, I've learned a lot from Dotson about some of those things that Wesley found important, but here in the United Methodist Church, we just haven't emphasized as much, but in other areas of Methodism, they truly do. And, and so, um, and part of that is to lift up this covenant prayer, especially in the new year. So um, we're going to read this together. And, and as we read this together, think of those ways that, that these words can truly become who we are and who we want to be for 2021. And so, uh, if you are comfortable, I invite you to stand as we uh, as we read these words together, and um, and then uh, we will have our final hymn. Let us pray. I am no longer my own, but thine. Put me to what thou wilt. Rank me with whom thou wilt. Put me to doing. Put me to suffering. Let me be employed by thee. Or laid aside for thee, exalted for thee, or brought low by thee. Let me be full, let me be empty, let me have all things, let me have nothing. I freely and heartily yield all things to thy pleasure and disposal. And now, glorious and blessed God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, thou art mine, and I am mine. So be it. And the covenant which I have made on earth, let it be ratified in heaven. Amen. One final quick announcement. Um, I'm going to lift up a prayer of personal privilege for myself. Tomorrow I'm going to see the doctor in Fort Collins, and I'm hoping that he finally says I get to take off this boot so that I can wear some regular clothes. I, I would, so I shouldn't say that, regular clothes. So I can put on regular shoes. I, I'm looking forward to that. And so hopefully it's my final appointment and, and everything as, as, my, uh, as my ligaments are starting to heal up. So ask for prayers as I travel down to Fort Collins and meet with the doctor and pray that it all goes well. So let us have our final hymn, verse 1, and take my life and let it be. Take my life. Good place to be. 